here they're they're doing a little assault and it's set up like a frontal assault but he wants to make a little adjustment here the obvious solution to being unable to advance frontally against the unseen enemy was to send a flanking platoon around to the right having them enter the woods and come out come in on the defenders from the flank and rear but I balked at the thought of sending one platoon such a great distance when for all I knew the woods beyond the canals might be thick with enemy I decided to cover our front with artillery and have two platoons try to advance frontally and notified second and third platoons to be ready to move forward under cover of artillery barrage but the enemy came suddenly to life when the riflemen rose to go forward and repulsed three efforts to advance so he wants to flank but he's weighing it in his head. The, the flanking positions through the woods, in order to flank, he needs to put his guys through the woods, through an area he doesn't know, doesn't know how well it's defended. So he says, you know what, instead of doing a flank, which is what I want to do, I'm just going to put down some artillery fire and we're going to do a frontal assault. They get shut down and eventually he does make the decision, you know what, the bet, the, the decision now becomes, okay, frontal assault is not going to work, now I'm going to have to flank. He goes back to that flank. I sent Whitman with a spare 300 radio and ordered him across the canal he moved out quickly and far to the right I could see his men emerge from the woods and wait across the first canal the water coming to the necks of the shorter men My fear of a larger enemy force in the woods Overcame my fear for safety of our left flank and I ordered lieutenant Bagby's platoon to follow the flanking force We could see the little dots that were Whitman's men emerge from the wood line and double time towards the garden Lieutenant Reed stopped the artillery fire the third platoon to my front began to advance and I knew it was only a matter of minutes until the objective would be ours I signaled the CP group and we moved to the railroad tracks on the and on toward the bridge past three wounded Germans lying helplessly in the gully beside the tracks where Barnes men had evidently shot them earlier in the day the automatic the enemy automatic weapon suddenly opened up again at the third platoon but the men were close enough now to pick up the bush from which it was firing they fired round after round into the clump of bushes and the weapon was silent so eventually he gets his flank on and that's what that's what wins the day 